Hi Year 5, it's Mrs Gibbons, hope you're all well. So this week in art, we are going to create an Andy Warhol inspired image of Mount Everest. So we're going to do a bit of background on Andy Warhol and then see how his artwork can be used as inspiration for ourselves. So Andy Warhol was a pop artist. Um, he's very well known and he used a technique called screen printing to create lots of prints that look the same but he often changed the colours of the pictures. Um, he, uh, Andy Warhol often used very bright colours in his work and a lot of repeated images to make patterns. So here's just some examples of Andy Warhol's work. So you can see he takes everyday objects, repeats them and often it changes the colour to make it very bright and vibrant and eye-catching. So what I thought was a really good inspiration, bearing in mind we're studying Mount Everest, is Andy Warhol created the series Vesuvi Vesuvius by Warhol, which is a, a volcano. So he did 18 paintings dedicated to the Italian volcano and he portrayed the volcano in the catastrophic act of eruption at different hours of the day from dawn to sunset and obviously used different colours. Uh, although it was the same image that was repeated, it looks very different because of the different combinations of colours that he used. So I'll just show you a bit of a close-up of one here. So he's used very bold and vibrant colours in sort of blocks of colour, uh, but it makes it a very eye-catching image. So we're going to use Warhol's series uh, on Vesuvius as inspiration and we're going to produce a series of images of Mount Everest. So as I've mentioned he was known for using a bold and vibrant colour palette so we're going to make sure the colours that we use are bold and eye-catching. So we're going to have a look at how we can use the colour wheel to help us select the colours that we are going to use. So a colour wheel uh, can often help us choose colours that are complementary. So if a colour is directly opposite another colour on the colour wheel, they are considered to be complementary colours. So the high contrast of complementary colours creates a really vibrant look. Okay, so if, for example, I wanted to choose yellow, I could look directly across the opposite colour on the colour wheel is a purple. So I know that yellow and purple would work well together as complementary colours in the same way that orange is directly opposite that sort of lighter blue. So orange and blue would work well together. So you might want to try and use some complementary colours on your uh, images. Uh, okay, we've also got analogous. Uh, analogous colour schemes use colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel and they usually create a more serene design. So these colour schemes are often found in nature. So if you think about maybe the sea or lakes and uh, countryside, they all would fit well together. So you can choose colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel. So you might want purples and reds or yellows and oranges. Uh, and it's useful to choose one colour to dominate the picture, have a second colour to support it, and then the third one may be used as a slight accent colour. Another trick you can use is a, a triadic colour scheme. That's where you use colours that are evenly spaced around the colour wheel, so almost forming a triangle. Okay, so these three colour harmonies tend to be quite vibrant, so that might be quite useful. Again, let one colour dominate your picture, so be the main colour that you use in that image, and use the other two as accent colours. So again, you could look at an, uh, a colour and then try and draw a triangle, so that sort of reddish colour would go well with yellow and blue. So you can use the colour wheel, make a little triangle, and that will help you choose a good uh, selection of three colours. You could also uh, use a rectangular colour scheme. That's where you use four colours that have been arranged into two complementary pairs. So again, choose a colour, make a little rectangle. That will give you four colours um, that will be a good colour scheme to use but again it's useful if you let one colour be the dominant colour, the main colour in that image. And then finally we'll look at a square colour scheme. It's similar to a rectangle uh, but the four colours are spaced evenly around and again it's useful to let one colour be dominant. Okay so if you choose a colour that you want to incorporate 
you do a little square on your colour wheel and that will help you choose four colours that are going to work well together. So the image I'm going to give you, so this sheet is on uh, the website so you could download it and print it off if you've got access to a printer. If not, feel free to just draw your own mountain range, okay? Uh, but you are going to repeat it. So maybe you could draw one and then trace it a few times. Um, I've done nine, it's up to you, you might want to just do six. Um, and then we're going to obviously try and really think carefully about our choice of colours um, to colour in these images. Or to, You can use whatever you want, you can paint, use felt tips, pencil crayons, whatever you've got access to. But the idea is that we are trying to make a very vibrant, eye-catching picture that uses this repeated pattern, but we change the colours on each one. So to give you an example, uh, I have just looked at some of the colour schemes that we've discussed and I've incorporated them into different images. Okay. Um, if I were doing this again, I would probably draw a ruler line down between each image and I'd actually draw right up to the ruler line. I think it would look a bit neater. Um, so I've had a get, and you don't need to write these underneath. I just wrote them because obviously I knew I was going to talk to you about it. You don't need to write any words on your picture. So here I've gone for two complementary colours and I've left the ice and the clouds white. So they were two colours that are opposite each other on the colour wheel. In this next one, I've used an analogous colour scheme. That is three colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel. So I've chosen the green as the accent colour for the ice. Uh, I've left the clouds blank and then I've used the, the green and blue. So blue will be my dominant colour there, really. That's the main colour you can see. Uh, the next colour scheme I used was a triad where I chose, I made a triangle on the colour wheel. Uh, so I've gone for purple as my sort of dominant colour, orange and green, and then I've left the clouds blank. Now on my next one, it was a rectangle, so it actually gave me four colours that would work well together. So on this one, I did colour in the clouds as well. So if you remember, the rectangular one is where you have a colour, uh, the colour wheel and you draw a rectangle, and that gives you those four colours to use. The next picture I did was a square. Sorry, my computer's just gone a bit dark there. Just bear with me. Sorry about that. My uh, laptop was just running low on battery. Okay, uh, I was up to the square, wasn't I? So again, the square is giving me four colours. So I looked on the colour wheel, drew a square, found four colours that would work together well. So I've used them. And again, the orange was my dominant colour. Um, and I've used the others as sort of an accent. Uh, for my next couple, I decided to actually use my uh, colours to sort of be like the sky and I've actually left Mount Everest blank. So that's an option as well. You might want to do that. So I tried to choose, well, I, choose, uh, I chose analogous, which is the three colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel. And I attempted to make it look almost like a sunset, a sky with sunset. Um, and then for my next one, I've chosen two complementary colours. So again, we're just back to two colours there. I just tried to make it, I, I was thinking sort of almost like of the rays of sun behind Mount Everest as it was coming up. Um, that's sort of what was in my head when I did that. And I'll obviously, um, I haven't quite finished yet. I was going to carry on doing some more. Just wanted to obviously give you these as an example. So like I say, uh, if you can print it out, that's great. If not, you can draw your own mountain range. Uh, just try and give yourself some detail like clouds and ice caps, which gives you the opportunity to put those different colours in. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, how you get on with that. Um, feel free to tweet your pictures or email them to me or to your class teacher. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Okay, take care. Bye.